Hi, in this video I am going to show you how to change the timing belt on a CJAA or similar engine. This engine is out of the car for illustration, but obviously you don't have to remove the engine for the service. Please read the video description below and sign up to MyTurboDiesel.com for full instructions including torque specs and important notes. There's a bunch of stuff you have to remove to get access to the timing belt. The water pump is driven by the timing belt, so you must change that at the same time. This is just how I do it, so follow my tips at your own risk and see my website for the full legal disclaimer. The upper timing belt cover comes off with these clips and it pulls up just like that. Then remove the 10 millimeter 12 point bolts holding the crankshaft going. Note that there's also a locating hole and bump so that you can only put the crankshaft pulley on one way. Then remove the middle and lower timing belt covers. I like to turn the engine to top dead center before loosening the motor mount because the engine is more stable mounted. Use this 19mm 12 point crankshaft bolt to turn the engine clockwise to top dead center. Continue rotating it until the crankshaft lock Volkswagen Tool T150 can be slid forward into this index hole on the front seal carrier. The pointer on the tool points to the dash mark on the crankshaft. There are a few defective tools floating around with the pointer to the right of the index hole so make sure that your pointer is to the left of the index hole. I also have a T150 equivalent. This tool bolts onto the crankshaft sprocket. And on tap to the center, this pin slides forward through the tool into the same index hole on the front seal carrier. When it's fully forward like this, you're at top dead center. If you rotated the crankshaft too far to the right, just use the crankshaft sprocket bolt and rotate counterclockwise far enough for any slack to be removed from the belt, and then try again. If you look at the camshaft sprocket, this tooth window must be at the top. If it's at the bottom, it means the engine is 180 degrees out of time, so rotate the crankshaft sprocket another 360 degrees to get this window up here. This rotates two times every crank rotation. Then verify the pinholes for the crankshaft sprocket and the fuel pump sprockets. Here's camshaft pin 3359. It goes, here's another style, it goes through the sprocket, through the pulley underneath and into the cylinder head. With the high pressure fuel pump, here's another style of pin. It goes through this tab into the hole on the cylinder head. Sometimes you have to twist or wiggle them slightly. If you can insert the pins now, great. If not, just insert them after the timing belt is off. It's perfectly okay for the holes to be a few degrees off from belt wear, and the manual doesn't say to put the pins in yet anyways, but I do it here and check the pin holes as one more check to make sure you've got everything right before taking the timing belt off. Counter hold the camshaft sprocket that prevents it from rotating by loosening these three 13 millimeter bolts. Now you only need to loosen them about two turns, just enough so that this sprocket can fully rotate. You don't have to remove them. Then counter hold the high pressure fuel pump sprocket bolts. These are 10 millimeter 12 point bolts and you just have to loosen these enough around one or two turns so that the sprocket can rotate. If everything looks okay, you can now remove the timing belt. Loosen this 15 millimeter nut and then use a six millimeter Allen wrench to turn this counterclockwise. Turn it all the way until you feel it hit its gentle stop. The belt is now loose, but you'll find it's still way too tight to come off. To remove it, remove this 13 millimeter nut, holding this small roller, and then remove the roller. This will give you a little bit more slack, but you'll find that it's still kind of tight. Once this is full counterclockwise, insert Volkswagen triangle pin T10265 or a 5mm Allen wrench into this hole here, depending on your model of tensioner, then turn it in the tightening direction, the clockwise direction. You'll see it move like this. This will give you a little bit more slack on the belt. Now you can either tighten this nut back down to hold it, or just if you have another hand available, pull here to put all the slack by the water pump side. Then the time belt will come off 
easily. Once it's off, you release, and there you go. If you didn't get the Volkswagen Pins 3359 into the camshaft sprocket or fuel pump sprocket, insert them now. Since these sprockets are loose, they can rotate somewhat within the range of these oval slots, and the pins will still stay in place. You can now remove the 15 millimeter nut holding the tensioner. The 13 millimeter bolt holding this small upper roller. And the 16 millimeter bolt holding this roller. Now this roller is actually pretty tight, so just watch out for that. Then remove the water pump by removing these three 10 millimeter bolts. Some coolant will spill out, so have a catch bucket ready. These love to get stuck, so if it is, just try rotating it to break the seal. Clean the water pump surfaces with some green scotch brite or something that won't damage the metal, and then wipe it clean. Wet the new O-ring with some fresh coolant, and gently press it in. You don't want to pinch or roll the new water pump O-ring. Replace this upper roller. then torque to 18 foot-pounds. Install a new large roller and then torque it down to 37 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. If you don't have a gauge, you can just mark the bolt head with chalk or marker to know exactly how much you've turned them. So first, torque it to 37 foot-pounds and then add another 90 degree turn. When you get your new timing belt tensioner, inspect it for damage and make sure that this tab goes into this slot on the rear timing belt cover. And always visually double check that with a mirror. Install the 15 millimeter nut on until it's hand tight and then loosen it a little bit just so that this can freely rotate. You want this to be able to rotate, but not pop off. Before you put the new timing belt on, just give everything a quick double check. This is at top dead center, this is at top dead center, and the sprocket can freely rotate. And this is also locked at top dead center, and the sprocket can freely rotate. You have to do that same thing to get more slack in the timing belt. So this time, I do tighten that 15 millimeter not just to hold it in place, so I have both hands to install the belt. You don't want this too tight, you just want it to hold the tensioner in position. Now if something feels weird when you're tightening this, just make sure that the tab is still in the slot and this hasn't become crooked or anything. After you put on your new belt, you want these sprockets to be more or less in the middle of their travel. Now, depending on whether you put the belt on this way or this way, just position the sprockets so that after you put the new belt on, they'll end up more or less in the middle. When you put the new timing belt on, you always have to start at the crankshaft sprocket because this sprocket cannot rotate. As I put the belt on, I'm just gently tugging it to take out any slack. And I'm going to put this right around there to count for any rotation of these sprockets once I get the new belt on. And if you don't guess right, then you can just take the belt off and try again. Underneath here, watch out for this tiny belt cover clip. Slip it around here. And same deal with this sprocket. I'm just going to guesstimate and put the holes right around the middle. Then tug the belt. Once the belt is on, it's true, tug it just to put all the slack around the water pump. And there you go. I'm just going to tug this here to see how these bolt holes look. And once I pull all the slack on the tensioner side of the belt, these bolt holes are more or less in the middle, and these bolt holes are more or less in the middle. So I'm satisfied with this belt positioning.
again loosen this tensioner back to the full loose position and it's important that whenever you use this tensioner always go to the full loose position before tensioning. Install the new lower roller. Torque to 15 foot pounds. Before you tighten the timing belt, make sure that these bolts are loose. This nut is loose, these bolts are loose. And also double check that this tab is still in the back. In the, it's still engaged in the hole in the timing belt rear cover. So from the full loose position, just turn it clockwise, uh, turn it counterclockwise, then tighten it by turning it clockwise. As you do this, it's normal for these sprockets to rotate slightly. You want to rotate until that pointer arrow is in that gap. Here's a close-up of the tensioner action. So from the full loose counterclockwise position, turn it smoothly clockwise until this pointer arrow is more or less over the right edge of that gap. Now I like to put it on the right edge of this gap because right now Volkswagen says on this exact engine model that it can be within this gap. However, after you turn the engine over twice, this pointer arrow can be up to a maximum of 5 millimeters to the right of this gap, which is basically over that metal tab. So I basically put it in the middle of the acceptable range. Counter hold the tensioner while you snug up this nut so that the tensioner doesn't get any tighter. And it's still over that gap, so it's acceptable. Counter hold the camshaft while you tighten down the bolts to their initial torque specification. And the purpose of counter holding is so that these sprockets don't rotate as you're tightening these bolts down. Now if you've done everything right, the timing belt is in its final position, but you still have to check. Remove the camshaft pin, the fuel pump sprocket pin, and the crankshaft block. Now this one has gotten a little bit tight, that's okay. Just wiggle the crankshaft sprocket around until it slides out. To make sure that everything is okay, you now have to turn the engine over twice manually. As you're turning the engine over, you should feel normal compression building and releasing. And if you feel anything jamming, which you shouldn't if you did everything right, then immediately stop. So I'm going to turn this back to top dead center. Now it's almost at top dead center. I'm just going to slow down and get my crankshaft lock ready. And once it's there, I'll start to slide this in. And as I pass the top dead center, pop that in. Then insert the camshaft pin. Always visually check that you do in fact see the hole. Now if it goes in, great. Now mine does not, but that's okay. If you see the high pressure fuel pump pin and it's almost right, that's okay. You don't have to touch it anymore. And then on this sprocket, you do not have to insert the pin. But on this sprocket, if the pin doesn't go in, you have to make some small adjustments. So remove this crank lock and then turn the engine opposite the normal direction, far enough for any slack to be removed, then start to tighten it again. Now once it's almost in place, keep turning it until this camshaft pin will go in. So this camshaft pin is now in. Then insert your crankshaft lock and see how it's sitting. If it goes in, great. If it doesn't, you have to loosen these camshaft bolts again. Now you don't want to counter hold against the timing belt, so loosen these bolts. Now if this crank lock is to the left of the hole, just keep turning it until it slides forward. Now in my case it's a little bit to the right of the hole, so turn the crankshaft sprocket opposite the normal direction, far enough 
for any slack to be removed, keeping in mind that you can't rotate it past these oval slots. Then rotate it in the normal direction until the pin will go in. Once the pin goes in, then this pin is also in. Now you've set this correctly. And just give this one last check. It should be more or less over the hole, but if, if it's a hair off, that's okay because of how a high pressure fuel pump works. Tighten the camshaft sprocket bolts back up. Just snug enough so that the sprocket won't spin. Remove the camshaft and crankshaft lock. And then turn the engine over twice manually again. I'm coming back up to top dead center so I've got my tool ready. And this time, the pin goes in. It's a little bit tight, but if you wiggle it, it does go in all the way. And that's it. So I can remove the camshaft pin, crankshaft lock, and then tighten down these nuts and all of these bolts to their final torque values. Now the camshaft and the fuel pump sprocket bolts are tightened to 15 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. Again, make sure to counter hold their sprockets. Then this tensioner is tensioned to 15 foot pounds plus an eighth turn or 45 degrees. Make sure to counter hold the tensioner if you don't want to get too tight from moving too far to the right. The rest of installation is the reverse of removal. Please sign up to my site to check for any changes in the torque specs and additional notes. If you found this video helpful, there's a PayPal donation button on my site where you can help out and return the favor, or at least click the like button. Thanks for watching.